and I'm a fashion designer from the West End of Toronto. I'm joking with you guys. My name is Roosh, and I'm a comic book artist and writer who is working on Kings of Nowhere Volume 2. If you guys are like me and you want to start your own comic or your own manga, or if you just like doodling up characters for concept art or character design, there is something you're going to have to draw a lot of, and that's clothing. Unless that is you plan to draw your characters naked all the time, which I do not have a problem with. However, if you don't want to continually produce R-rated content, then you're going to have to start learning how to draw clothing. To understand clothing, you must first think like a fashion designer. No, seriously, you, you do. All clothes share a similar property, and that is they fold. All clothing will fold when there is tension applied, so if you pull on it, or if you compress it, so you bunch it up. Understanding where to apply folds is the key to making a character feel real. Don't show folds or enough folds, and your character is gonna feel rigid and flat. Apply too much folds, and you're gonna hurt my eyes. I'll show you the rules you need to follow when drying clothing. Yes, there are rules to follow. Just like how I taught you with anatomy, clothing will require a lot of studying before you get the hang of it. Clothing can be a little trickier than learning muscles because different fabrics act unique. But at the same time, you can get away with a lot more when drawing fabric. For example, when I move my arm up and down like this, it's not following the exact path every time. See, the fold will be a little different every time I do this. So what I mean is, you have to follow the rule, but you don't have to follow the exact path. It follows the rule of tension and compression, but when it comes to drawing it, I can be a lot more expressive in how I follow that rule. Now, let's dive into some examples so we can see what I mean. I created this guy as a template to put her clothes over. We're going to start off with a large t-shirt. I'm making sure to include the seams because they can greatly affect how the folds are created. I want to begin with the color of the shirt. As I move on to the sleeves, I want you to see how the arm is pushing ever so slightly on the sleeve. Where the sleeve would normally drape further out, this time it's right up against the arm. The X marks the point of tension. Tension is anything that is pulling the fabric. In this case, it's the shoulder. The folds will go towards that X. Next, I keep in mind that the shirt is large, so gravity will play a huge role in how the folds are formed. Since he's bent over, the shirt will flow down away from his body. Where it begins to compress is when it meets the leg. It folds into a C shape. There are many reoccurring shapes you will see in fabric. C, U, I, Z, and reverse versions of each. By adding a contour line around the shape, I indicate the 3D form of the fold. Make sure to not overdo it because simplicity will show your understanding more than cluttering the shirt with folds and wrinkles. The shirt swoops down and we meet our next point of tension which I will mark with another X. Here, the hip is pulling the fabric. The folds will go in two directions from here, and both of these points are the shoulders, which are also points of tension. These points of tension are all pulling against each other. Even if it's ever so slightly, you will still see it. You can test this out for yourself. Use both hands to pull your shirt in opposite directions. The folds will go from one hand to the other. Now, the sleeves here will be pulling at the deltoids. It's pulling from the seam of the armpit. Usually, but not always, where there is tension, the opposite end will have compression. See where his left arm is raised? Tension starts at the armpit, and so the fabric is compressed on the deltoids. I want to draw some loose jeans on this guy with rolled up bottoms. The leg is raised, so the fabric is pressed against the quads of the leg. The knee will be our point of tension, so it's pulling the fabric from the butt towards it. The fold will show the direction. On the inside of the knee, we will see compression, marked by a C fold. See where there is tension? The opposite end will usually have compression. It's key to remember this formula. I'm using arrows to show how the folds are being pulled towards the knee. I wanted to show you how because the leg is raised, the fabric is being pulled from the butt, thus there is compression on the other side of the butt. Still, there is a little pull as he lifts his leg, so you'll see the fabric draped towards the opposite leg. The leg is somewhat neutral, so the folds will be affected more by gravity than the form of the leg. However, fabric will begin to wrinkle the more it is used, and in the case of jeans, you will see wrinkles around the knees. Next, I will showcase tighter clothing. On the tight-fitting shirts, the folds mainly originate from the bottom of the armpit. Like I said before, 
Imagine pulling a shirt using both hands. The folds will go across. Your arms are pulling the fabric across, so we'll see horizontal folds on the chest. As we get to the pelvis, the folds will start to come down, making a V-shaped formation. On the arms, you will see mainly folds where the elbows bend and when the fabric bunches up before the cuffs of the sleeves. On the other arm, the fabric is being pulled towards the elbow from the armpit. It's important to remember that these points of tension will pull against each other. The armpit will pull against the elbow, the butt will pull against the knee. The fabric bunches up right above the wrist and I will use C, U and Z shapes to make it clear. The same rules apply to the legs, but this time the pants are so tight that although the knee is pulling from the butt, there is less fabric to pull. Instead, we will see folds at the seams. Tighter pants, such as dress pants, generally work this way. On the neutral leg, the seams will pull against each other to create small horizontal folds, as gravity plays less of a role here. Thus, we will see less vertical folds. Finally, I'll show you how very loose clothing works. Seams don't play much of a role on loose fitting clothes. Instead, the key player here is gravity. I will use more swooping lines to create large C and U shapes for the sleeves. Same as before, the elbow pulls from the armpit and then drapes vertically over the wrist and hand. The fabric over the knees follow gravity, thus falling vertically. I'm using much less folds since the fabric is so loose. On the neutral leg, the only folds that are very noticeable is the one where the fabric bunches up over the foot. A C-shaped fold will do the job nicely. Next, without reference and only following the formulas, tension pulls against tension. Where you find tension, the opposite end will usually experience compression. Tighter clothes will have more horizontal folds because they follow form, while loose clothing will have more vertical folds because they follow gravity. I highly suggest trying these out for yourself. Find reference images online or draw people outside. What will guarantee your success is repetition, back-to-back -back drawings, some quick, some with a little more detail. Draw clothing for males, draw clothing for females, hell, draw clothing on dogs. Anything that will help you understand the formulas better. For the full experience, hit up my Patreon. I'm better at explaining my process through writing than I am at speaking it. I have a detailed tutorial there for those of you who want to take my clothing and fold lessons to the next level. You can also find my previous lessons on anatomy and get sneak peek looks on the upcoming graphic novel. Also, get access to the Discord where I can critique your work so you can level up faster and in the process you can roast me and meme me as much as you like. Like always, the lesson to take away from this video is that you need to study. When I was trying to learn clothing and I wanted to get better at it, what I did was I would take a sketchbook, I'd go to the bathroom, put the sketchbook down, and I'd wear different clothing with me. So I'd bring a hoodie, t-shirt, different pants, and I would just put them on and I would draw myself in different poses, two to five minutes each. And I wasn't trying to make pretty art pieces. I was more trying to just figure out the techniques and understand the rules that I've been teaching you guys. I was doing it so often that I was able to create my own characters and their own poses and I would put clothing on them. And the fabric felt believable because I had studied it so much. What I'm teaching you here and on Patreon are months and years of realization and exploration. My goal is for you guys to become the best artist that you can be. So I hope this video helped you guys out. My name is Roosh. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.